Hello, my beautiful, beautiful friends. We are here for one of my very sporadic coffee and chats, life updates, cozy, very human moments. And the goal here is I just want to update you on my life a little bit, update you on what I kind of have planned for the next month around this space and what we're doing here because of what's going on in my life and get you up to speed and I want to do this because first, one of the things that I think I've really discovered I love and is important about the work that I do is to step out of teacher role sometimes and just relax into being my human self, share a little bit of that humanness with you all, the places where I am exploring or having to learn or having to begin, um, because first of all, I love when other people talk about this stuff uh, in their lives, and second of all, because it helps, I think everything just run more smoothly and for me to feel more like myself and it's something that I really want this year to contain a lot more of around here and to have more of those human moments. So let's get into why I'm sitting down here in this beautiful January to talk about life updates. Let me take a sip of my tea. So the big news is in a few weeks, I am making my move to Sweden. Now, this is something that has been in the works for a good year and a half. Um, My partner, my husband uh, is Swedish and we met a few years ago and we've been in this big process of exploring this life together. And of course, then there was a bureaucratic process for me to get the residency so that I can be in Sweden full time. And so that just went through in December. It took a little over a year for us to get that entire process done. It's been a really in-between 2021 was the most in-between year of my life. I had to really learn to just be in the present moment and not try to control and nail down all the definite hows and whys and wins of every single thing and just learn to relax into that. And I think that skill has gotten so much stronger in me through this process. And now we're here. Um, The news just came through very, very recently. And so I have been in the midst of disassembling my little um, safety cocoon here in the U.S. where I would come between visits and trips to Sweden to work, to recharge, to be with my close family and friends and support network in in the midst of this in-between time because if there's one thing that helps, community helps a lot. Um, So I am in the midst of completely liquidating my life in the U.S., which I really love. I love getting rid of things. I like feeling that freedom and that lightness and the reminder that our things don't make our relationships more or less real. It doesn't make the past more or less real. And it doesn't make like our identity or our our existence in this world more or less real. And having that freedom from things can really feel so good to me. But it's also, I have to say, like, interestingly enough, a very emotional process, even when you're feeling very positive and good and you like getting rid of things, it's kind of like working out or kind of like going into a really hot sauna where it's like you're processing through things and it takes physical and emotional energy to do that. And so I'm definitely in the midst of doing that work of moving. And I think all of us who have done any moves in life and I've done many, um, know that moving always ends up being more emotional than you plan on it, even when you have it very well organized and you're on board with the move and you feel good about it. It always brings up emotions you don't see coming. And I'll just have moments when I'm going through something and thinking about the moment that that box of books or that a piece of clothing had meant something to me a couple of years ago and how I've changed. And so it's it's a really interesting time of self-examination. Um, with that in mind, I want to update you too about what my plan is for the next month because I am going to be in such a state of flux between closing out this apartment and getting everything, <laughs> getting everything gone, taken to new homes and cleaned and everything, um, getting all of my stuff prepared logistically for when I do my flight over there and dealing with all the bureaucracy on the other side. Uh, I had to really reassess how I wanted to 
show up for everyone and for myself during these next this next month, basically, Um, because after that, things are kind of going to settle down a little bit. I'm still going to be doing some process and some some processes of moving and moving through all of that. And it's going to be it's going to be a longer term thing. But the the crazy chaotic nature of getting rid of everything and moving will have calmed down. So over the next month, I've decided I realized I just don't have the energetic resources to do all 12 of the monthly Zodiac readings like I normally do. And I have been on YouTube for five over five years, and I have never taken a single day off of doing or a month off of doing readings. Um, I've and so this is really scary for me. Um, it's scary for me to make this choice to just take care of myself, take a little bit of downtime because it's unknown, trying something new. And also I don't want to let people down. I don't want to be inconsistent in showing up here. However, I think it's also important that my readings come from like a true place and not just me kind of like producing them and putting them out there when I, when I don't have the emotional energy and when I want them to be something meaningful and beautiful for everybody. But that doesn't mean I'm going to stop doing things here because I think it's, I still want to be checking in every single week, posting every single week. And I have a plan to do a big, long, juicy, overarching February chat. We're going to go through all the aspects, all the energies, some of my intuitive wisdom, as well as a bigger tarot reading for everybody. So it's going to be a larger discussion. We're not going to break it up into the 12 signs this month. Um, And we're just going to try that out. That's going to help me out a lot in the midst of this kind of chaotic time when my recording space is a little bit all over the place. As you can see, I'm in the midst. I've got books back here. I'm in the midst of just there's a lot of chaos that you don't see (laughs) um, outside of the frame of this conversation. Um, So that's my plan. We're going to do a big overarching February discussion. And then I'm going to post every single week and we're going to do just some philosophical reflective chats about different aspects of things, different topics. If you have a topic you'd really like me to discuss, you can always um, leave a comment and we'll see what we can do. So I'm going to plan on showing up here every single week, still providing those resources, making February a great spot. My Patreon schedule is going to stay exactly the same. And so are the new and full moons that'll be here um, on the main channel. All of that's going to stay the same. I'm just going to modify a little bit by not doing all 12 signs this month, which like I said, I feel a little scared about it. I'm trying something new. Um, But I also know that everybody's going to move on because I'm not the center of the universe. And I think there are plenty of other readers out there. And I I realize that. So um, that's the plan. And that is the update. And I just wanted to conclude this little cozy chat first with a sip of tea with just a reminder about something that I've been thinking about a lot in the midst of this really kind of beautiful, wonderful, exciting moment in my life, getting to move to this place that's been in the works for a few years and um, starting a new chapter in my life and really feeling so much gratitude and appreciation for this opportunity and how much it means to me. And if I think about it too much, I will get really emotional. Um, I'm, I, it's a dream come true, truly. And it's such a privilege and an honor to get to do this move. Um, and so it's a high point in my life. Like this is just one of those really, really special moments that we have in life sometimes where something culminates and comes together in a really meaningful, potent, powerful way that is symbolically important as far as death and rebirth and also just logistically important and, and just living this life important. Um, and this is one of those moments. It's a high point in my life that is worth celebrating. And with that, I want to say, That so often, you know, when we see other people having those celebratory moments or we see it in movies or we think about it in our own lives, we kind of have this expectation that it's going to be just this really happy, floaty feeling 100% of the time. But what I found with these really powerful, potent, high intensity moments where we are going through some kind of really potent shift that yes, it's going to be joyful, energizing, exciting, you know, artistically adventurous and getting to explore different aspects of ourselves. It also means that we are probably going through some deeper emotions as well. We are probably going to be going through grief, confusion, fogginess, sleepiness, overwhelm as well. And that, you know, that is natural and it's part of this process. And I know for me, 
Like I feel so good. I feel so happy. I feel so excited, but I'm also grieving, leaving behind past projects with my friends um, and my like communities that I've built at different phases of my life that are closing out or have been lost over the last couple of years as the world has changed. I'm grieving, you know, all the versions of myself I'm leaving behind as well. And that comes with a lot of tenderness, a lot of sensitivity. And some days I just feel plain overwhelmed by the bigness of the chapter that I am opening up because it is going to be a long, big chapter with a lot of learning. And I'm kind of, even though I've been spending like basically half of my time in Sweden for the last year, I haven't really ever had the chance to fully settle in until I get there in a little bit here in a a handful of weeks um, and to really settle in and process and deal with the slow but sure uh, culture shock that happens. Because I think we think of culture shock as you get off a plane and you're like, oh my God, everything's so different. But culture shock I have found in any expats or anybody who's lived in different cultures knows that it happens and sneaks up on you after several months or, and it hits you in these random moments where you just wish things would work in their familiar way. And so I know I'm on like a long journey of learning and being a newbie and just having to figure out how everything works. And This is just going to be a really, really big adventure. But my hope is that I invite you along for more of these human moments as I do this, because I think this is such a special, fun thing to explore and share with you all. So I'm hoping to do that um, even just in this coming month as we do, as I do this transitional chapter in my life, which is just feeling quite overwhelming, I'll be honest. Um, But also just in the coming months and years ahead, I'm really excited to do that. And I do plan to come back to the monthly readings in uh, March. So we'll do our March readings uh, from my new location. And I think the work that I do from that location always has kind of like a different energy and feel. And I'm really excited to explore it um, and get to settle into that and explore it with you all. So I hope I hope that... um, this goes over okay with you all. I'm sure it will. You guys are beautiful, beautiful people. You are like me. So many of you are like me where you are highly sensitive people, sensor, sensorily very sensitive, um, empathic. And I, I think it's important to remember that we can do so many cool things. We can like pursue such a beautiful, adventurous, wild, free life styles and life paths as highly sensitive people, but we need to remember to take care of ourselves. We need to remember that that's also going to come with some of these deeper emotions and I need to remember to take care of myself. So that's what I'm attempting to do here by just scaling back a little bit over the next few weeks and then coming back full steam once I'm done with this really big transitional moment in my life. Uh, let me know how, what you think of that or any topics you might want me to address for the February big overarching juicy reading that we're planning on doing, um, or for the other chats. Cause I, like I said, I'm planning on posting here every single week all the way through. So we are going to be hanging out regularly during this time. Um, and yeah. That's that's the update. It's a pretty big one, um, and I felt a little superstitious to even talk about it uh, before now. I don't know. There's just something about really personal about waiting for this bureaucratic process to do its thing and give you this approval. And I still feel like, is it real? Am I even allowed to talk about this? But I think it's so important to be forthright that, yes, this is happening. And um Yeah, we'll see where the adventure takes us. I love you all so much, and I will see you back here so, so soon for our next chat and for our overarching February reading together. I love you all so much. Thank you for being here with me. And if you want even more of this personal journey, you can check out my Patreon where we hang out every single week and we go over all the transits every single week. We have some great activations and worksheets there, and it's a wonderful little community if you're looking for a little more hang time with me. Okay, um, and you can find all my info, including my handle at Sarah Verba for Instagram. There's only the one true one all below. Uh, I love you all so much, and I will see you very soon in our next chat. Bye.